and now we increase the value in the background. I'm trying to get a full range of values going here, uh, and I want some really bright lights in the background. You can see here, even though it's indicated, all the stuff here, you start getting a sense of depth, some space. Like you have no idea what's back here, but now it starts to feel like a department store or some kind of grand building. Maybe it's markets and shopping, all that kind of stuff back here. Even though it's just indicated, because of this playing with value, uh, you, people are used to seeing Times Square or seeing giant cities, and when they see those things, they get a sense of light in contrast with huge buildings and darker details in the front. So this is what we try to play off, this kind of contrast, to contrast this stuff over here with this really bright, glitzy, glamorous lighting back here to create that sense of city life, you know, crowded, claustrophobic city stuff. Okay. Here are some additional details, more Art Nouveau type of elements. So yeah, those those pictures I showed you earlier, reference points, are what we use to bring in some of these elements, like you know this this little thing right here is is direct result of looking at the, these kind of railings uh, here, right? Very similar in scope, and you know reference is not about copying. You know, we get a lot of uh, students or you know junior students who think referencing actually means copying. That's exactly not what it is, okay? You're not taking this and just copying it. You're taking the shapes and the forms that make these shapes and you're basically translating that into your design. You're not taking someone's design and basically putting your painting and go, that's done, right? That, that's plagiarism, that's copying. Uh, but referencing is not copying. Referencing is about understanding, about extracting. So if you look at a piece of leaf, uh, referencing will be basically taking that leaf and now turning it into a parking structure, right? You use the same blade, for example, you know, let me just do a demonstration here, you know, most people see the leaf and this is what they see here, right? Nice little leaf. Now to the majority of the people on this planet, you tell them, hey, what do you see here? They see, okay, I see leaf. But to a designer, you could turn this into something very neat. For example, that shape is very cool. So I could turn this into architecture, right? which a lot of architects do. Architects look to um, nature for a lot of their design influences. So I could take these and turn it into, a, say, a parking structure, sci-fi parking structure. I know it's hard to see because I'm drawing red here, but uh, so I could say, like, hey, these are walkways. Vehicles could park here, so a little spaceship could fly in and park right there. These are little vehicles. Right? And then these are little people walking around. So you could turn it into this kind of design element. And then you can start dressing it up so it's not so literal translation of a leaf. But this is this is what design is. You know, a lot of design is about this. It's about retranslating forms and shapes and turning it into something else and something interesting. But yet at the same time the audience has a connection to your designs. They sort of understand what you're trying to get at. They've seen it before, but yet it's different. Right? That's kind of the I guess the uh at least in our entertainment world, the, the key, because you want to appeal to a lot of people, right? So you take this, and it turns to this, okay? Whereas if I just took this leaf and threw it into a, into a, onto a building, then that's not a design, it's just, uh, you know, copy and pasting something. Okay, let's go back to our painting here. All right, little details, a couple more little highlights. These little tiny details is what cleans this painting up, going from a very rough painting, like this one, into something that's starting to get quite clean. And the resolution of this image is quite low. It's actually about uh, 1800 pixels across. Pretty low for a painting. But because they're live demos, I keep them low to save time. Okay. Here I did a little quick level adjust to balance out so I could get some pure blacks going on here. So very dark. This is an interior shot. So I want to create a nice contrast between the ex interior and the exterior that's out here. Okay, so between, whoops, here to there. So I increased the contrast point. Okay. And now we're starting to build some atmosphere between the store and the camera. So even this distance right here, right now, is too dark, you see. We've got pure blacks going on in here. Uh, even though there's all this light in here, so there's going to be oxygen and maybe some pollution, the light is going to get diffused down between this light and my camera here. There's going to be quite a bit of space, and that's going to cause this light rays to diffuse, right? And that means it's just light going to scatter around, and they're going to light up the air, they're going to light up uh, the environment. So when, by the time it reaches your eye, the contrast goes down. So by adding this, we do exactly that, you see? This is diffused light that's coming to my eye. And it makes the environment feel more natural. You can see on and off what that does. Okay. Here's a few more details. I never actually had the time to finish this ship here, but there's actually another spaceship flying around with some wires, which I quite don't understand how that works, but it's quite neat, I guess. Uh, some more atmosphere to break out 
this uh, form, these forms here, right, up these railings and stuff, to between these railings and that spaceship, so to really push that flying thing into the back. Right, these are very minor, minor adjustments. And then once we push that back, we clean it up. Okay. So this painting is the majority of it is actually done by the time we reached about somewhere over here. Let's see. As soon as we put that first atmosphere fog in, this one, the overall value scale of this is established because we could shrink it down. You can see, it starts to work. You see, you blur your eye, it does the same thing. It starts to have a sense of depth, uh, whereas the original, if I turn it off doesn't. You see, this is very graphic. You can't tell what's in front, what's in back, unless you look at the details to tell you, uh, oh, that's perspective inside. But if, if you squint your eye, it's very hard to make stuff out. But you start doing this, you start to define what your eye is supposed to see. So the, all the detail does is just make sure it holds up when, when we uh, go in big like this. But again, if you zoom out and your painting works at a small scale, then you got something that's uh, going to be okay once you finish it. Okay. All right, so let's continue with some of these uh, details here. Where are we? We're somewhere over here. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, a little bit more atmosphere. Uh, for example, separation between the ship here and the dock, which is here. So see here, this is too dark. They're getting too close together. This ship is uh, uh, presumably floating above this building here. So a lot of the ground lighting from the city below, this white lights and all that kind of stuff down, way down below, it's going to bounce into here, you know, your secondary light source. So let's create a little bit of atmosphere separation to suggest that this is actually a, a ledge that's going to fall off versus them touching each other. All right, they're not touching, they're actually floating. Okay, and that helps with that. Uh, same thing with the stuff up here. Right. I tend to make the values, even this beam here, relatively to this here, they're, even though they're the same beam, this is actually further from camera. So I want to decrease its value down just slightly to create that sense of um, depth. Okay. Next is just very minor cleanup on these uh, headlights. Same thing here, this is a bounce light coming from below. These are cylinders, so they're going to uh, reflect at the, at the uh, angle that's uh, basically parallel to your eye, and that has to do with materials, something we'll get into probably way later. Okay. Um, and here's some texture work. Okay, this stuff gives you that extra uh, level of detail that will take a very long time to paint, because at this point the design's done, the value's somewhat there, so we got to do is get going there and start cleaning some of this stuff. For example, boom, we put a glass window here. Right? And this is ex extracted from pure texture libraries, you know, side view, flat, perfect uh, images that you can then lay down. And this kind of stuff is quite hard to paint. So with the texture, it saves you a lot of time. You can see like this window here has the same thing. And just this is a quick example of that. Uh, you can actually get quite crazy if this is a very, very tight painting. You get in there and really clean stuff up with textures. Right? And this is a step I do, usually I do last, um, uh, because I don't want the textures again to run my painting either. Uh, of course, you could do it the other way around. You could start with the image and paint into it, which we'll do actually next week. Um, so there's many different ways to approach these kind of paintings. This is just one of them. Uh, but in this kind of case where the painting overall is uh, done from a painterly point of view, then we add a texture uh, afterwards. Right? Or you start the opposite, which we'll do again next week. So also putting some scratches and all that kind of stuff to make this thing a little bit more used looking. Yeah, because a lot of people are probably gonna, you know, this thing's flying around, it's gonna get dinked, it's gonna get all sorts of little stuff, so it's not so shiny. Okay, a little bit of atmosphere here to separate that doorway out. You can see, so it looks like uh, it's a hole in the ship versus a black pattern that's built into the skin of the ship, right? Value separation. 